Three teenagers are facing charges in the stabbing death of 17-year-old Naeem Wright in Coney Island nearly two weeks ago. The suspects ranging in ages from 13 to 15 years old that turned themselves in on Sunday. Yeah, safety inside and outside of school grounds. Top priority for the city, right, amid the recent wave of violence and guns recovered by safety agents. So joining us this morning is New York City School Chancellor David Banks to address these concerns and more. Chancellor, good to see you in person. Good to be here. So, Chancellor, you know, this is a big, big topic right now. We even heard some of them, this address in the mayor's State of the City address, really going after youth and making sure they are safe. The big topic is whether or not there's going to be more school safety officers. We asked the mayor that. He says open to the idea. Where do you stand on that issue? Well, we've got close to 4,000 school safety agents in our schools currently, the largest of any school district really in the entire country. The answer, though, for this situation is not really about additional school safety agents. Okay. It's about the additional supports that we're going to provide to young people who just seem to be lost, not engaged in the ways that they really need to be, and that's what it's going to be. So one of the things we started was what we call Project Pivot, right. and we engaged uh, community-based uh, organizations from various aspects, from various neighborhoods around the city, and these are people who grew up in those same neighborhoods who've had to, you know, manage their way through a lot of a crisis and trauma themselves and have figured out how to be successful. And they want to help share those lessons with young people. Mm -hmm. They're going to mentor. They're going to provide safe passage. We've been in, they've been in place for about a little over a month now. And we think over a long period, you're going to see some real solid results. Okay. Have you seen any success stories from other school districts across the country where they have similar programs like Project Pivot? Yeah, I mean, we've heard about a number of different places that have small initiatives mm -hmm. that have been helpful. And listen, I started the Eagle Academies for Young Men mm -hmm. right here in New York City as a response to this. And they've been wildly successful finding places for young people and young men in particular to give them a place to be where they will be safe and that they will know that they belong. Yeah. Um, that's what young people are looking for. Kids that pick up guns are kids who are like living in darkness. They engage with gang activity because there's been nothing else that's been put in that place for them. You, you mentioned that, that you felt some may have lost their way. What was it, the pandemic that led people us awry, that they just didn't have enough going on? What, why were we seeing a rise now, maybe not so much before the pandemic? I think the pandemic absolutely played an effect, but I also think the proliferation of guns in our yeah. community is also, you know, kids have always gotten into fights after school right. and those kinds of things, but they didn't always have access to the kinds of uh, guns that are out in the streets now. Yeah. And, and I wanted to note also that in our schools, our schools have been safe places. Mm -hmm. They really have been. Most of these acts of violence have happened outside of the schools. And that's why I work very closely with the police commissioner and the mayor to find those safe passages for young people. Right. Yeah, well, let's talk about funding, though. Um, last week, the city unveiled proposed changes uh, to the way New York City public schools are funded. So the FAIR student funding plan is going to shift $90 million to schools serving the neediest students. Can you talk about how that money is going to be distributed? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it because we've identified the schools that really have the greatest population of students in need. And there's going to be additional funding for the schools and those principals to be able to deal with that. Um, then we've got also additional funding for students who are living in temporary housing. And that includes our asylum-seeking mm -hmm. families with their students. Um, those schools that are receiving the majority of those kids, they're going to get even additional funds to support the needs that come along with that. And um, so we're excited about that. We think that the, we're going to leave a lot of that to our school principals who really know best what's happening at the school level yeah. mm -hmm. to make the right decisions on the kinds of hires and programs that they need to put in place. But we'll be there to support them. Yeah, help me understand this because you're talking about an increase in funding there, it sounds like, right? But the mayor also did this about face on $80 million worth of enrollment-based school cuts. But there is going to be some kind of cuts, if I, if I understand this correctly, that needs to be made in all areas of the city, including the education department. So you're increasing funding in certain areas, but are there going to be cuts? Well, I, I can't say that there will be cuts. Or, or the, the challenge is that we are in the negotiating season for the budget right now. Okay. So the city council is going to have a lot to say about that um, as they negotiate with the mayor. The mayor put out his preliminary budget, and, uh, and now the negotiations have already begun. We will see where that will will lead us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the chancellor. I certainly want to see uh, as much funding for our schools as we can possibly get. Understanding that we have lost lots of kids yeah. over the last several years. And when you lose lots What's of kids, lots? over the last five years before we came into office, we lost 120,000 students. Mm -hmm. wow. In the last two years before we stepped into office, we left, lost 70,000 just mm -hmm. within two years, that two-year period. But the good news is that we're we're, we're stemming the tide on that, yeah. and we're not losing nearly as many students. And I think there are a lot more families that are really believing in the work that we're doing, and I, I think the turnaround is beginning. Okay. 
Can we talk about the migrant crisis? I mean, you're talking about the students. So many of students have come into the system. Are you still able to reach these children? I mean, many of them still don't even speak English. Or do you have enough staffing, the teachers, to work with these children? I wish I could take you out to visit some of the schools where we have, in fact, received these, these families. It has been wonderful and amazing. If you want to see New York City public schools at their best, you come and visit the schools who are receiving these young people, the parent coordinators, the families who are volunteering time, the students themselves who speak Spanish and who volunteered to really be big brothers and big wow. sisters and translators for those wonderful. kids. It is wonderful and amazing. They always need more resources. It's one of the reasons why these proposed changes uh, in the budget are something that we're excited about. Yeah. Um, but but it's, it's really our school community stepping up in a very powerful way. Oh, but you don't have to. We'll go. We'll come. We'd yes. love to do it. Let's we'll do a story. Do, let's go. Oh, we'd love it. All let's right. It. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll definitely go. Fantastic. Um, but, you know, this is big right now, this whole idea of chat bots and the chat GPT okay yeah. I had to really gonna do some research about this because I, I feel like I'm, I feel like it's like really over my head you know for me it used to be a calculator where you could like turn it upside down and write hello sure. and now there's this whole thing where this is really changing the way essays are written and cheating is done in schools oh, it is geez. very advanced very AI what are your thoughts on it and how is it being used if at all we put a pause on it for just a moment to say we needed a minute just to kind of study this because our concern was that students would just use this technology and it can write all your essays and do anything else that you want, right. want to do. And that doesn't help us understand if our kids actually are developing the knowledge and the skills that they need. But I will say that it is part of the innovation wave and it is, it is a wave of the future. We're all gonna have to get used to it. So we'll be making some announcements in the coming days about what our overall response is gonna be. We will be ex much more accepting of it. We just need to make sure that our teachers know okay. how to use it. Give best. me a sneak peek to what this announcement is because I think t the people, <laughs> I need to give us some kind of news this morning because, yep. because it, is, it is, I can see how it's gonna be used for good. Sure. Right, for certain for good. But how do you prevent it from being used by those who are going to, or is it just a reality and a cost of doing business that, you know what, some people are going to use it for, for bad, just like back in my day, you could store information in those fancy calculators. Yeah, I, I, I think that there's always a um, challenge that we face whenever we have innovation, and that's the way I look at it. Uh, I don't necessarily see it for bad, I just see it as challenge, and we've got to figure out what we're going to do to adjust that, mm -hmm. to put the guardrails in place, um, but it represents innovation at the highest mm -hmm. level, and it's not just in schools. It's going to impact what you do in journalism oh, um, um, and every other industry. But we can't run from it. Right. We've, we've got to get out in front of it. We've got to make sure we put the safeguards around it and, uh, and have the maximum impact for good. That's what we're focused on. Are you going to get involved in this as well? I mean, because for me, like we were just talking about, we're not that tech savvy, but as parents, you know, with our children in school, we have to get into this too and try to learn it. So are you going to also take part in learning about how this is all working? Let me tell you something. This stuff blows my mind. Every day. <laughs> I've, got, I've got three grandkids who are on yeah. their tablets every day and they can do stuff that I can't do. And it, it's just incredible. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm 61 years old. I had a birthday a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, I didn't come up in this generation uh, using these tablets and right. this technology at this level. Uh, so, but I'm still open to grow. We're all lifelong learners, yes. and that's what this is all about. Gosh. You know, I think the city public schools are also going to have a program, have to have a program for the parents as well. <laughs> to teach us. To teach us. <laughs> I mean, I have how a... to keep up with our kids. That's right, that's right. And our, and our kids are going to be the ones that are going to have to teach us. Exactly. Well, <laughs> I'm a seven month old, I'm terrified of what she's going to, what she's going to, what her technology is going to be like and how I'm going to be. Wait till she's else. two. Yeah, seriously, my gosh. Uh, Chancellor Banks, good to have you here in person. Good to see you. My pleasure. Thank all you. All right, good conversation.